Welcome to the online lecture for Tourism in the ASEAN Perspective. Today, we'll be discussing Unit 3 all about tourism development and management in ASEAN region. There are a wider opportunities to increase investment levels in ASEAN and more so in ASEAN tourism through identification and promotions of investment opportunities in regional clusters of destinations. In terms of investment policies and regulatory framework, a single production-based and tourism destination, there are considerably wide vari variations from country to country, thus making cross-border investments inconvenient, insecure, insecure and expensive to undertake. You could also visit investasean.asean.org which serves as a platform where investors can access information on board ASEAN investment opportunities in terms of tourism, currently limited on the ASEAN 5 and focused largely on infrastructure, gaming, and theme parks. So to start, let's have a quick review of what we have discussed last time all about the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Let's watch this video. To continue, let's discuss the ASEAN Edge. There are four ASEAN Edge. First, natural resources. Investors significantly gain from the wealth of breathtaking topography, land formations, and even water, bo water bodies in many ASEAN countries. Like Vietnam, Philippines for instance, are home to two of the world's seven new wonders of nature such as for Vietnam we have Halong Bay and for the Philippines the well-known Puerto Princesa underground river. Second, we have culture, culture, culture. ASEAN's rich culture are reflected in its wealth of as ancient temples, churches, colonial houses, heritage sites, colorful festivals, and the world-famous cuisines. Tourist fascination and are very uh, important in the investor's greatest assets. So just like what we have what you have watched 
the World Heritage Sites, ASEAN is very rich in terms of culture. Not only about the tourist attractions, but more so with its people. Access to the talents. Talking about the people, ASEAN peoples are known for their charm, hospitality, and in many countries within the region, English proficiency, workforce, qualities are the inv are what the investors are looking for, especially when establishing a business in a service-driven sector such as tourism. Medical tourism. Medical tourism is slowly becoming a niche area in ASEAN for travelers who visit the region to receive treatment and undergo medical procedures. Just like Thailand, they have the largely benefited from this market, welcoming 2 million medical tourists a year. On the other hand, Singapore, with 400,000 patients, visits every year, contributing a profit with some 700 US dollar. While the Philippines also promotes medical tourism as highlighting the quality of Filipino medical practitioners and current efforts of countries' top hospitals to upgrade their facilities and equipment. To continue, sustaining the growth among ASEAN. Growing size of middle income class. Combining the middle income population of China and India, which is known as the two of the ASEAN's top two resources, it has the estimate of 400 million, while the numbers within ASEAN is said to nearly 300 billion. As their disposable income increases, middle class households are likely to use it for consumption purposes. When we say disposable income, these are the income which is meant for leisure travel, for shopping, for the tourism services, which includes travel and vacation. Imagine luring at least a quarter of this middle income chunk. That translates to about 175 million tourists from only three source destination. So that's one of sustaining the growth for a CN member. Second, we have rising phenomenon of budget airlines. There are a lot of budget airlines. You could, you, can you name a few? Yes, we have Cebu Pacific, Philippine Airlines, Jetstar, and this rising phenomenon of budget airlines are becoming more competitive as they continue to target larger markets. To name a few, again, we have AirAsia, Jetstar, Tiger Airways, Cebu Pacific, which are the commonly and the more most popular carriers within the region. Also, we have integration and liberalization. ASEAN's continued push for political, economic, and sociocultural integrations is likely to further bring down barriers within and among institutions and people in the Southeast Asia. Intra-travel within ASEAN, for example, has been opened, meaning Asian locals are visi visiting selected Asian countries for, for prescribed number of travel of days without a visa. The services sector are also being liberalized to achieve better flow of commercial activities, intra and extra ASEAN, including tourism. So these are the three main ways on how we could sustain the growth in ASEAN. And talking about the initiatives of selected ASEAN member states, we have first Indonesia. 
Indonesia embarking on several infrastructure projects to ease travel within archipelago. As tourists, our main concern is the travel time. And not only per pertaining to the travel time, but the convenient and the ease when we are traveling. And airport is the number one concern. And in Indonesia, they are their project includes expansion of this airport in Jakarta and in Bali Airport. On the other hand, Malaysia is known for convention, conferences, and exhibition. To name a few, these are some of the conferences held in Malaysia in the year of 2019. Most of their uh, tourists are business travelers, incentive travelers who tend to attend conventions, meetings, and conferences. And to give you a figure, the country's impressive record of 25 million visitors in 2011 and today is 2020. Maybe that would be doubled or tripled the number. Philippines, boosting activities in leisure and gaming as investment in mega casino complex start pouring. With 4 billion US dollar mega casino complex is set to open in Manila in 2013. And that's an example. We have Solaire, City of Dreams, and Okada. Next, we have Singapore. Continue to develop the sector through increased investments and theme parks, resort casinos, such as Marina Bay. Thailand, on the another hand, aims to improve connectivity into the neighboring countries, such as Mekong region, through the new 2,000 kilometers R3A highway that will run for roaming in China through Lao PDR into Thailand. So these are just a few of the country's initiative. And talking about the Thailand, the president, the current president of ASEAN tourism sector, which is located in Thailand, have a message to end this online lecture. Let's watch this. We'd like, we'd like to hear your strategy then. Ah. To introduce more, not only to uh, Thailand, but ah. yeah, to the, the whole Lao audience. Yes. What are the strategies? Uh, my strategy is to try to promote Everything is good to follow the concept of ASEAN Tourism Sector. I thought that from this ASEAN Tourism Sector, the whole uh, concept is uh, to develop outside the country, develop the target audience, and of course, at the same thing, want to promote the art and the Malaysian culture. Exactly. And the third one is training. A training. Training who? Uh, Personnel. Uh, no, uh, the training all members. All members, that means the service uh, uh, depend on a uh, bilingual mm -hmm. or inclusive or mild. Mm -hmm. We should do uh, the training also between ASEAN to be standard, like uh, in the uh, world class standard festivals and festivals all this. And mm -hmm. I am expect that Thailand should be the, the model, the model of standard of uh, um, tuition service of tuition in Thailand that I am a number one I expect to for them to be in, in the country. Yes. In, in dealing with the tourism business, where did Thailand come from? Who is Thailand? Okay. So Thailand is kind of adapted. Yes. Very easily. To, you to, know, to for this my it's very important that I can